So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, in the first slides, uh, two or three slides, I will share to you the behavior of people toward the uh, vaccine misinformation, or in Indonesia, it is popularly called as hoax or hoaxes. So you can see here, this is based on the survey uh, carried out by UNICEF and Nielsen. We have five top hoaxes circulated in Indonesia, what people believe about vaccine uh, misinformation during the pandemic. Of course, number one is vaccine is haram because Indonesian mostly populated by more than 90% of Indonesian is Muslim. And also it is related with the, uh, yeah, the, the belief that uh, vaccine is made from pork because pork is haram, of course. And also there is an agenda of the population of the uh, people, which is uh, also believed by the people. So that's why vaccine is uh, containing chemical weapons, also contains microchip. We have a lot of um, yeah, made belief uh, claim about this. Uh, but number five, perhaps, uh, I don't know, perhaps because, because this is uh, really Halloween, <laughs> but injected by the vaccine <laughs> make you as a zombie. We have widely circulated some uh, videos about uh, uh, people who made a theatrical performance. It's a theatrical performance, but by doing this uh, simple editing, uh, people uh, circulated it is uh, proof that uh, once you get injected by the vaccine, you will become a zombie for sure. Um, okay, so I would like also to share uh, another uh, findings that we have. So we're talking mostly in infodemic management about digital listening. But actually, between the online and online offline conversation, there are always a link. This is what we observe uh, during uh, six during March 2022 until August uh, 2022. So the past uh, six months uh, in this period of time, we can see how the moment of uh, health protocol or health procedures always uh, uh, link uh, and always followed by the rise of a certain vaccination misinformation related with uh, what happened in the real world. So we have like, for example, a booster and mask of policy in several countries followed by Indonesia. And then at the same period, we also have these, uh, these hoaxes that vaccine boosters are made from abortion embryo widely circulated in the Twitter. Uh, and how uh, there is a plea for the government to stop the health protocol because of that. Uh, of course, we are not talking about how this kind of misinformation uh, disrupted the COVID-19 uh, vaccination, but also have huge influence in the kids' uh, uh, immunizations uh, as uh, in general. I think other doctors in Indonesia, we have Dr. Kenta and Dr. Dirga also can confirming it. Uh, okay, so the vaccine is new, uh, COVID-19 vaccination is new actually, but the problem still persists and still it is about the classic problem of vaccination. Uh, in uh, 2020, in the first uh, weeks of pandemic until 2022, uh, Tina, Liz, and I, we are involved in social inoculation 2000 uh, research. And one of the findings that uh, we have here is behavior toward vaccine. So uh, we are doing two times a survey to understand uh, people's behavior about the vaccine. We just want to know what kind of COVID-19 vaccine rumor that ever heard. So we can see here. Oh, okay. <laughs> the uh, the font is too small, but I can uh, share to you that the th uh, there are three most um, uh, people believe about the vaccine misinformation. One is vaccine safety. The second is uh, vaccine benefit. Not because people believe vaccine have benefit, but more about the disadvantages of the vaccination. And then uh, the politicization of vaccine. So we can see here the uh, people opinion about this is not relatively a uh, difference between the first survey and the second survey. So we comes up with this uh, a conclusion that safety is always the biggest concern when we talk about vaccination. Um, when people doesn't believe the benefit of vaccination, it is about uh, we see that we have this gap of information that needs to be overcome. 
and about the politicization of vaccine yeah it's always there religion politics and the complication of the vaccination so it leads to how uh, very important knowledge and trust between us uh, so part of the uh, uh, findings that we've got led us to build this framework because the social inoculation research uh, is targeted, uh, the objective is uh, trying to find intervention among the people. How to intervene to making intervention, how to make them believe uh, uh, that uh, what they receive is misinformation and it could uh, lead to greater acceptance of the vaccine. Uh, okay, so this is the framework that we do. We base our um, uh, research based on social inoculation approach. And then also we understand doing debunking of misinformation is not enough. We should uh, move ahead, far one step ahead by doing this pre-banking or preemptive debunking. Lisa uh, yesterday has already uh, uh, yeah, uh, raised this uh, term. And then based on that, we uh, have to come up with the intervention. Uh, we use folk behavior models to uh, uh, be part of the framework. And by that way, we try to doing this intervention. I hope these pictures, uh, this diagram, this scheme can uh, give you uh, insight just a little bit. Uh, uh, this is a simple model of how we try to adapt the social inoculation model to social inoculation uh, when we try to pre-banking the myths of uh, vaccination. So uh, that is about how we have to tackle the misinformation. But we also have uh, problems uh, in trust, of course. When people already understand, okay, that is a, a misinformation, they still believe and doesn't want to be, uh, doesn't want to go to the vaccination site. So we understand that uh, it is we we deal with bigger problems. It is a trust. Trust involves hope, faith, confidence, assurance, and also initiative. But on the other hand, we also have to deal with distrust, which related to fear, skepticism, cynicism, watchfulness. Something really evil will happen and then vigilance. So winning the trust lies in the heart of information ecosystem. It's time to talk about community engagement. So this is our challenge uh, uh, at the pandemic and, and until now. We have to do, uh, our intervention is doing pre-banking and also have to instilling trust. Uh, there is a uh, lots of theory about it, but at least we pinpoint three variables that are very important when we're talking about trust. It is knowledge, it is communication, and also community. So this is what we do. Uh, we deal with people. Community engagement is all about people. So in each community, we try to find the trusted people. We seek champions to opening conversation and also to give testimonies, enhancing message and supplies them with knowledge and information. These people could be anyone. It could be health cadre, it could be uh, community leaders, it could be somebody in the family that is trusted by others. And we try to maintain relationship and enhance the interpersonal communication tricks and tips. This is the first, the people. And then the message. Well, <laughs> Vaccination is very complex. Digital literacy is very complex. Digital listening also very complex. So translating science is a must. Uh, and here we try to always framing positive chains, trying to give positive vibes everywhere. We try to localize and customize based on our targets, uh, repeat and deliver it in many ways and maximize media performance. This is one of the example, uh, the social media content that we produce for young people. Okay, and then the tools. Uh, we try to uh, develop tools that is portable, easy to use, unplug, relatively no cost. It is very important because it is also attract other people to be part of this movement. Uh, and fun and engaging. Uh, it should be yeah, uh, best to cover the general issue and be customized for other issues as well. This is uh, the first uh, tools that we develop for intervention. So uh, you see that we have cards for the cadres. Uh, we have also developed chatbot of WhatsApp based on WhatsApp. 
uh, and also we have um, a, a giant snake and ladder. Of course, we customize this snake and ladder for uh, school children and for elderly. And then the approach. We try to maintain self-efficacy in every level, sharing positive vibes, not fear, and then seek ways to deliver it with, with fun and engaging ways and use every possible tools and media. So here uh, we found out that uh, IPC training is the game changer. All right, uh, actually before these slides, I already also uh, uh, adding one slide, but because I'm uh, making it at the last minute, <laughs> it doesn't appear here, but you will, uh, uh, but let me share it uh, right now. So in May 2023, uh, a moonshot part of the Google, uh, they released a research about pre-banking misinformation in Indonesia. They pinpoint three uh, tactics that used to share by the people. So uh, uh, when we're speaking about hoaxes or misinformation, there is always the producer and also the sharer. Uh, okay, uh, the producer who uh, deal with that uh, uh, hoaxes, let it be the affair of cybercrime. But our uh, mission, our target is the people who share it because it comprises a lot of uh, uh, the biggest part of the society. So there is three tactics they used to uh, be uh, used to be uh, the information, the misinformation that's shared by the people in Indonesia. The first one, it is about uh, discrediting the person. Uh, the second one, twisting the uh, content of the information in such a way so that people uh, uh, believe that. And the third one is about igniting emotion. Once uh, people get uh, ignited by the, triggered by the emotion, and then all the rational uh, uh, mechanism is just poof, diminished. And yeah, uh, that is uh, how sharing information or sharing misinformation happening. And also in Indonesia, 91% of misinformation shared by the people, according to that study, is the contextualization of the original content. And people in Indonesia do believe with news report. So that's why a lot of misinformation cloaking or packaging uh, as a kind of news report and cited scientific uh, journal. So, so this is what had happened. Uh, so uh, about the IPC, uh, Game Changer, this is the last slide, <laughs> I, uh, I promise. What we do is uh, we educate, we exploring the methodology and we educating people, uh, every, everyone, uh, the cadres uh, or whoever wants to be part of us, learning to assess the audience and then learning to listen learning to respond on the reacts, learning to give a solid confirmation, and learning to bring the commitment. Uh, this is the basic of IPC. And the second one, uh, another level, is customizing the approach and build communication strategy. And yeah, we use games, songs, poetry, pantun, or uh, poetry in rhyme, happy vibes everywhere. So this is what we've learned so far. Um, trust is a lifelong investment. Knowledge is a content. We should explore more about that. And we should start it from now. And communication is our tools, very, very powerful tools. So infodemic management talking about the data, big data, digital listening, analysis, something like that. Okay, fine. If data is a holy text, then in community, we trust. So that's all my presentation. Thank you very much.